what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel look at this nice and beautiful question on the board that we're going to be solving and the question says find the values of x for which x plus 3 or raised to the 6 is equal to 2 to the 6. well for some student they would like to take the sixth root of both sides well, when you do that, you're not wrong. But you're only going to get two values for x and then miss out on the remaining four values of x. So the method I'm going to be teaching would be for us to have the six values of x. So our first step will be for us to move two to the six to the left hand side so that we have x plus 3 or raised to the 6 as 2 to the 6 crosses to the left it becomes minus 2 to the 6 and this is equal to 0 since nothing remains on the right our next step will be for us to decompose 6 so that we have x plus 3 well 6 is same as 3 times 2 minus we'll do the same thing here this becomes 2 6 is same as 3 times 2 and this is equal to 0 well this can further be simplified into x plus 3 raised to the 3 and this is further raised to the power of 2 well, this is valid because from the law of indices, powers multiply. So 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So this expression here is same as the one here. We're going to be doing this one the same way. Minus, this is 2 to the 3 raised to the power of 2. And this is equal to 0. Now we have an expression in difference of two squares. Well, difference of two squares has this property. For example, when I have a squared minus b squared, this is same as a a minus b times a plus b. Now let's express this like this. Now notice by comparison our uh, a is in the form of x plus 3 raised to the power of 3 that's a is in the form of x plus 3 or raised to the power of 3 and our b is in the form of 2 to the 3 so our b is in the form of 2 to the 3 now let's express this in this form so we have a minus b this is a, a is x plus 3 raised to the power of 3. This is a minus b, our b is 2 to the 3. That's it. So this is for this times a plus b. So a is x plus 3 raised to the 3. That's a plus b, b is 2 to the 3. And this is equal to zero so we've been able to express this in difference of two squares property so we have two cases we have x plus 3 raised to the power of 3 minus 2 to the 3 to be equal to zero this is one case and the other case we have x plus 3 or raised to the 3 plus 2 to the 3 to be equal to 0. Now let's solve these two cases one after the other. So for case 1, case 1 is in a form of difference of two cubes. And difference of two cubes has the property, for example, when I have a cube minus b cube, this is expressed as a minus b 
times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now notice that a is in the form of x plus 3, x plus 3, and b is in the form of 2. So now let's express this like this. So we have a minus b, a is x plus 3, minus b, b is 2, times a squared, a squared is x plus 3 squared, remember a is x plus 3, so squared plus ab, ab means multiply 2 by x plus 3, so plus 2 times x plus 3, that's ab, and then plus b squared, so plus b squared, that's 2 squared, and this is equal to 0. So we've been able to express this in a form of difference of two cubes like this. Let's move forward. Our next step will be for us to simplify what we have inside of this bracket and this bracket. So we have x. Now 3 minus 2 is 1. So x plus 1 times. Now let's expand this. This is x squared. So x squared. Now 2 times x times 3, that's plus 6x plus, now 3 squared, that's 9. Now let's open up this bracket. 2 times x, that's 2x. Now 2 times 3, that's 6. Plus, 2 squared is 4. And this is equal to 0. So we have x plus 1 times now simplifying further we have x squared now 6x plus 2x is 8x so 8 8x very good now 9 plus 6 plus 4 that's 19 so plus 19 and this is equal to 0 so we have two cases we have x plus 1 to be equal to 0 or we have x squared plus 8x plus 19 to be equal to 0. So for the first case, we see that x will be equal to, as 1 crosses to the right, it becomes minus 1. So this is the first value of x. Let's call it x sub 1. Now for this other case, we're going to be applying the quadratic formula to solve this. A, that's the coefficient of a squared, that's 1. B is the coefficient of x, and that's 8. And C is a constant term, which is 19. As we're looking for x, we're looking for the second and third answer. This will be equal to negative b. I'm writing the quadratic formula. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now let's substitute into this formula. So x sub 2 and 3 will be equal to minus b. b is 8, so I'm going to be putting 8 there. Plus or minus the square root of. Now b squared, that's 8 squared. 8 squared will give 64 minus 4ac so 4 times a a is 1 times c c is 19 all over 2a that's 2 times 1 now let's simplify what we have inside of this radical so we have x sub 2 and 3 will be equal to this is negative 8 plus or minus the square root of now 64 minus 4 times 1 times 19 is actually 76. So this is 76. All over 2 times 1 is 2. So this gives x sub 2 and 3 equal to negative 8 plus or minus the square root of. 
Now 64 minus 76 is negative 12. All over 2. Now let's simplify what we have here. So this is x equal to negative 8 plus or minus. Now the square root of negative 12 is going to be a complex number. Now let's split negative 12 into perfect squares and some other factors. So we have the square root of 4. Square root of 4. 4 is a perfect squared times 3. So 4 times 3 gives 12. But since I have negative, I'm going to be multiplying by negative 1 all over 2. So this results to negative 8 plus or minus. Now, I'm going to be doing this one after the other. First, start with the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is actually 2 times the square root of 3. So I'm going to be leaving that inside of the radical. Now, times the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is actually i, which is iota, all over 2. Let's continue on the next slide. Our next step will be for us to factorize. Now, notice that 2 is common on the numerator. So let's factor out 2. So we have x to be equal to, now 2 out. So we have negative 8 divided by 2. I'm going to have negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 3i divided by 2. I'm going to be having root 3i all over 2. Now this 2 goes off with its 2 so that we have the value for x to be equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 3 times i. So there are two values for x here. So we have one of them to be negative 4. Take the positive sign plus root 3i. And the other one is negative 4. This time Take the negative, negative root 3i. So we've got three values of x from our first case. Now let's focus on our second case. Our second case is when we have x plus 3 or raised to the 3 plus 2 to the 3 equal to 0. Let's do that on the following slide. So for our case 2, we have x plus 3 or raised to the 3 plus 2 to the 3 to be equal to 0. Now notice that this is a sum of two cubes. And sum of two cubes has this property. For example, when I have a cube plus b cube, this is equal to a plus b times a squared minus AB plus B squared. Now let's express this like this. But before that, you notice that A is in the form of X plus 3 and B is in the form of 2. So that we have A plus B to be A is X plus 3 plus B b is 2 times a squared, a is x plus 3 squared minus ab, meaning multiply b and a, which is minus 2 times x plus 3, and then plus b squared, that's 2 squared. And this is equal to 0. Our next step will be for us to simplify what we have inside of the brackets so that we have x, 3 plus 2, that's 5, times. Now, what we have here, x squared, now 2 times x times 3, that's plus 6x, and then 3 squared, which is going to give us 9. Now, minus 2 times x is minus 2x 
minus 2 times 3, that's going to be negative 6 plus 2 squared is 4. And this is equal to 0. Now let's simplify what we have inside of this bracket. So we'll have x plus 5 times x squared. Now watch out. We have 6x minus 2x, which is going to give us 4x. And then 9 minus 6, that's 3, plus 4 is 7. So plus 7 equal to 0. Let's continue on the next slide. So we have two cases. We have x plus 5 to be equal to 0. And we have x squared plus 4x plus 7 to be equal to 0. So let's solve these two cases one after the other. So for this first case, we have x to be equal to as 5 crosses to the right and becomes negative 5. So we can call this the fourth value for x. Now to get the fifth and sixth value, we're going to be applying the quadratic formula to this other case. So our a is the coefficient of x squared and that's 1. Our b is the coefficient of x and that's 4. And our c is the constant term which is 7. So that we have our quadratic formula. We're looking for the value for the fifth value for x and the sixth value for x. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's substitute negative b, that's negative b is 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times a, a is 1 times c, c is 7 all over 2 times a, that's 2 times 1. So this simplified into negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 times 1 times 7 is 28. All over 2 times 1 is 2. So x will be equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 28 is actually negative 12 all over 2. So the value for x will be equal to negative 4 plus or minus. Like we have in the previous slide, the square root of negative 12 is the complex number which gives 2 root 3i all over 2. Now let's factorize. When we factorize, we have x to be equal to 2 is common. So let's factor out 2. Now negative 4 divided by 2 is actually negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 3i divided by 2 is root 3i all over 2. Now notice that 2 can cancel off 2. So that we have other two values for x, which are, let me write it here, we have the fifth value for x to be negative 2, go with a positive sign, plus root 3i, and the last value for x, which is x sub 6 is equal to negative 2. Now go with the negative sign, negative root 3i. So in total, we have 6 values of x. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, 
Take care.